Okay, hello everyone. Again, my name is uh, Matt of Canna, and uh, I'm a principal consultant with InfraGrid. And let me just uh, set the stage a little bit. We've all talked about IoT and smart grid systems, but there's a lot of work that needs to happen before we can take the journey to implement these smart systems, mainly in the data aspect of any utility. So things like uh, your spatial connectivity in your GIS systems, uh, your SAP system having your asset data. So all of this data needs to be cleaned up, collected, integrated, so that the utility is actually ready to implement a DMS or OMS or feeder automation, substation automation, et cetera. So with that, let me start the presentation. So there's surely many ways to take a smart grid journey this is one way to do it. So we've got starting with AMI, going to OMS, going to IEDs, to DMS, and finally to mobile. On the AMI side, you know, you've got the TOU dynamic pricing, there's remote connect, disconnect, there's power on off alarms. On the OMS side, there's smart meter integration, so the power on off alarms can go to OMS. The operators can make smart decisions on, on dispatching crew to restore outages. Uh, predict outage locations and saving time on their ETRs, and also doing effective calculations of reliability metrics like CAD safety, et cetera. On the ID side, there's substation automation, there's feeder automation, so uh, there's smart reclosers. Um, of, of course, we talked about sensors this morning in the inaugural address. There's, there's sensors that can be placed on the existing assets, so th that'll, that'll encompass the smart IED hardware out there. On the DMS front, there's fault location, fault isolation, switch order management. And finally, on the mobile side, really, it's the field force transformation. So taking your workforce and giving them the tools and technologies to uh, execute work and also keep the source systems that are maintaining data as current as possible. But all these present challenges to a utility. mainly because a utility has been used to maintaining data from an asset management perspective. There's long lead times to maintain your spatial data, for example, in GIS or in SAP. So once a device is commissioned, your source systems may not need to be updated for three weeks, four weeks, eight weeks, what have you. But of course, with the coming of operational systems or smart grid in general, the need for maintaining these systems in a quick time frame becomes crucial. So it's difficult to shift mindsets from utility perspective from a wires company now going to a wires and information company. And that represents the silos of databases. So in any utility, there's many databases that are keeping information, but they're not connected. They have, you know, a breaker data set will be in system A, and the same breaker data set will be in system B, and those are kept they're, 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 those are maintained by resources of the various departments independently. They don't really talk to each other. And that's a problem because now you don't have a source of truth for your information. So these are some of the challenges that we see to evolving to a smart utility. So let's unbundle this smart grid transformation. What does it mean for, uh, for the utility? Well, there's five key targets that we see. One is operational systems. So this is your DMS, your OMS, for example. Operational processes, so how will the processes change in the future? So uh, how will the switch orders be generated? How will the field be dispatched? How will load flow studies be conducted? All of those will change. Data capture and source system. So you know, you know, now you'll be capturing a lot more data than you did before. So you have to make sure that you're fully resourced to track this information and you've got the right infrastructure that's scalable to store additional information. Sustainment procedures, like I mentioned before, the processes followed right now to maintain information are for asset management. So now this is becoming more automated. This is uh, more frequent. Now you want to make sure that when a breaker has been replaced in the field, this gets reflected in your operational systems within a day or so. And of asset modeling standards, 
how a station is modeled in systems, it's very subject, it's, it's subjective to how the employees of that group maintaining data look at it. So a bypass switch, which is a simple asset, may not be required to be modeled in your spatial database because no one needs it right now. But going forward with the DMS, a bypass switch at a recloser station becomes crucially important again because if there's any work being done at this recloser station, the switch needs to be closed and the breaker needs to be opened. So having standards of maintaining information and collecting the right information for various asset classes is very important. So how do we execute this transformation? So we feel there's five key pillars that utilities can tackle starting now before any smart grid project actively starts to roll out. Database completion, database accuracy, asset modeling standards like I said, sustainment processes, and systems integration. So let's talk about this in a little more detail. So database completeness. So essentially this means that we want to make sure that your, let's say, connectivity is correct. You've got all the data that you need all the way down to a customer secondary. It's not uncommon for a spatial, sy spatial system like GIS to have data only up to a distribution station and only rudimentary data on the LT, f and on the LT feeders. So uh, having all of this data collected, how is your network fully uh, how, how your topology is actually connected to all the switches, your fuses, your meters, uh, uh, that becomes important. So having a completeness check of your data is vital to starting any smart grid program. Database accuracy, you'll be surprised once you take a peek at the database that you've got for, ma for various assets, data will be inaccurate in many cases. And we've seen this in multiple engagements and you need to deploy a task force essentially to clean this up. We've made assumptions in the past. You know, you, you pick 100 reclosers, you pick 100 fuses and 100 switches at various parts of the network. You assign your engineers to look at the data that you've got for each of these asset classes. And you figure out how many errors there are, assume a normal distribution across the platform. Right away you know, with plus minus 5% confidence, how much of your data is correct and how much time you need to spend on getting this data rectified, how many resources you need, how much dollars you need. Asset modeling, so there's station model, there's a feeder model, there's a customer secondary model, there's asset model, I'm sure there's other models that utilities use across India as well. So making sure again that the uh, ways we model data in GIS, in SAP, and other source systems is consistent across the company. Sustainment processes, this is actually close to my heart. This is a problem that we see in utilities day and again, um, because again, they are not information companies. So we think there are, there's an, it's, it's important to have some level of automation from a data flow perspective so that the owner's job of keeping information current is you know, taken over by an automated tool. So if one system A gets updated, system B gets aut automatically through an integration scheme gets updated as well. So there's, um, uh, you know, there's no manual handoffs in the middle. And again, this, this goes back to the need of having real-time updates in your operational systems like DMS and OMS. And lastly, systems integration. You'll be surprised that there's, like I said before, there's a lot of silos of databases, but before any project commences, there's an opportunity to take stock of what are these various interfaces for your source systems or various interfaces that could be put in place that connect these silos of databases, but going towards the road of having one source of truth. Because you don't want to have the, you don't want to be caught in a conundrum where you've got asset modeled differently in one system and not differently on the other system. So maintaining that one source of truth becomes important as well. And that's it.